Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe and do consider supporting the channel via PayPal or Patreon. You'll find the links in the video description. It's the final of the first FIDE Grand Prix tournament. Hikaru Nakamura plays Levon Aronian. I think both players have something to prove. Neither player qualified for the last candidates tournament, so if, they, if either of them can win this first tournament, that would be a big step towards qualification. Remember, at the end of these three tournaments, the top two players will qualify. If you want to see all the ins and outs of the rules, then do Google it. <laughs> but let's have a look at this first game. So Nakamura with white, and it's potentially uh, a marshal, marshal gambit after c3, d5. We know that the marshal gambit has been part of Aronian's repertoire for a long time. But Nakamura plays one of the many anti-marshal systems. And it's different when black sacks a pawn here because <clears throat> white can happily take that e-pawn in the middle. And the reason is that white's knight has a square here. Anyway, Aronian declines with bishop b7 and d3. d6, it's all pretty normal so far. Having protected that pawn, black would like to play the knight out here to take that bishop. That bishop is very important. So, a3 is played. Give that bishop a little bolt hole. Queen d7. Very nice, connecting the rooks. Knight c3, about time white developed this one. And knight e8. So that knight actually, yeah, on a slightly strange square on c6 as it blocks the bishop, but now it's going to redeploy to the e6 square. Um, so that opens the diagonal for the bishop, and the knight looks pretty good on e6. Ronin has played this a few times before, so he's very comfortable with this position. And Nakamura plays, to my eyes, a slightly strange move. Um, feels to me, if the knight goes back here, then white should be moving forward in the middle. Um, and, well, Ronin has played this before, and he did okay with black, but I think white has the better chances here. Just it's it's certainly more comfortable for white. But Nakamura went knight h2 and then knight g4. But actually this doesn't really trouble black. Very often you try to knock out this knight when you're trying to gain control of the d5 square. But here, you know, that knight can always be expelled by c6. So knight takes, bishop takes, and queen to g4. Queen looks quite active, but actually black is so solidly placed that it's just not an issue. There's no real attack there. The king has already stepped away from the g-file, rook e8, and in fact it is black that is preparing perhaps to strike <coughs> on the king's side with moves like g6, putting the bishop back, and then f5. And then we'll see that that bishop is looking very good on that long diagonal. So Nakamura needs some distraction here. You know, it just feels to me that black's position is really harmonious. You can see that. Rook's connected. I like that. All black's pieces in very nice positions. Um, whereas... You know, at the moment the rooks are split. Yes, I realise this bishop can develop. White doesn't have a pawn break here. You know, white would kind of like to play this, but it doesn't look great as it opens up this bishop. Whoops. Even, even on that diagonal. So Nakamura starts to get a little bit of play on the queen side. Wants to just keep black a bit busy. And of course you'd like to exchange and bring the rook down. So b4 closes it. Now, I'm sure the move he wanted to make was knight d5 here. He played more conservatively with knight e2. If knight d5 hits the bishop, the bishop drops back. 
Remember, black is getting ready to play, make this move. If knight takes pawn, f5, and suddenly black's pieces are unleashed. Black is at the moment two pawns down. However, black's pieces look really dangerous here. And that's not an easy position for white. So therefore, Nakamura played the knight back to e2. And I understand why. I think Nakamura sensed that you know, that position was kind of getting out of control. Now, there's a pin here. Aronian wants to be able to, to move that knight, so he played queen d8. c3 starts to try to break open the queen side, also covers the d4 square. Pawn takes, pawn takes. And g6, so this prepares to bring the bishop back, and then f5. So you see... You know, Nakamura has to do something quickly here. It's interesting, my computer wants white to take here and then go c4 to try and keep the position closed. But that doesn't feel like a very human way to play the position because, you know, there is potential for black to open up this diagonal. Um, so Nakamura, very aware of that, plays bishop d5 to exchange this potentially good bishop on b7. And of course if c6 then the bishop is blocked in, doesn't look so nice. So bishop exchanged and then knight c5 still looks rather dangerous for white. You know, this pawn is attacked. If the queen comes to c4 to protect it then e4 and that starts to break the position open. Once again you can see that black's piece is beautifully coordinated. And, I mean, white, you know, has some difficult questions to, to answer there. So, bishop h6. Now, I'm sure Nakamura saw what was coming here. Basically, he has sacrificed a pawn. So, knight takes pawn here. Bishop takes rook. Knight takes rook. Rook takes. Rook takes bishop at the top. So, Nakamura now a pawn down. However... The situation is cleared to some extent. The queen switches over to attack that pawn, which is defended, and now rook b1. So for that pawn, Nakamura has some activity. You know, if he could play potentially the queen down here, even go for an endgame with the, the rook coming in on b7. And what's happening to black's kingside play, where well, you can see that black is distracted. Black has been distracted from the kingside. Um, of course, it would be fantastic to advance these pawns, but with the queen, well, dare I say it, in Siberia, it's not going to be easy to attack white's king. So, reasonable pawn sacrifice. Rook b8 challenges the rook on the c-file. Rook b4 so that means if the rooks are exchanged, then pawn takes, and that potentially gives white an interesting uh, pawn overlap on, on the queen side. Um, difficult for black to try and make use of this extra pawn. Um, A5 is suggested by my computer, but this is not easy for black to convert. Uh, you've got to watch out for this knight potentially swinging around here. The queen can potentially come in here. This is di very difficult. King g7 played, which feels like a very, very natural move from um, black's viewpoint. Bring the king off the back rank. Guards the pawn here. Of course, if this is taken, then watch out for the queen taking this pawn here. That's the point. Knight g3, so now the knight activates. h5, knight comes to e4, hits the bishop which drops back to d8 and protects that pawn. a5, still you know, a little bit of pressure here, so that pawn is fixed on a6. This is not a simple position to play for both sides actually. Queen a7. So Aronian starting to think about you know, improving the situation of the queen. 
g3, and now, big moment in the game, Ronin decides to launch his kingside pawn majority. The knight comes back. There are pros and cons to doing this. Of course, it's nice to get these pawns going, but it does expose the king to some extent. Rook takes b4, c takes b4, and now e4. After that exchange, you can see that this move is always in the air, creating a dangerous passed a pawn. But in the meantime, Ronin attacking here. He wants to expose the king. He, he wants play. He wants counterplay. Knight b3. The knight swings over. Of course, that would be a wonderful square for the knight. Looking at e6. Yeah, it turns into an octopus. No doubt about it. So therefore, bishop f6 stops that. King g2. The king just steps up off this diagonal. Very tidy. h4. So Aronian trying to open up the king. Wants to exchange here. Pawn takes pawn on h4. And now king f7. Just coming over. I wonder whether that's sort of directed against queen here. Maybe he wants to bring the king over to stop, stop the queen coming in. It's possible. I mean, queen c6 is, is still a legitimate move. But anyway, h5 played. I think Nakamura just wants to weaken these pawns a little bit. b5 creates that outside pass pawn. And really interesting from Aronian, he doesn't exchange here, which would bring the queen to a good position. But he continues his idea of opening up the king. So it really... Interesting, it's, it's like a game of chicken. <laughs> you know, who's going to get through first? Um, if pawn takes pawn, then here. It just knocks out the pawn in front of the king. So f4. And our queen b8. So attacking this pawn, but also... Here's the point, looking at queen g8. So if pawn takes pawn, then queen g8, and actually this queen comes in, this is extremely dangerous for white. Suddenly, you know, the, the king could be in some kind of trouble here. So Nakamura preempts that with king f1. And that means if the queen switches over, then there's queen takes pawn check. So a takes b5. Queen c6 wants to come in. So what's the score at the moment? Four. Black is two pawns up. But that is a big pass pawn. And the queen can hassle the king. So Aronian needs counterplay. So that's why he ditched one of the extra pawns and played queen a7. And now the queen is guaranteed to get into the position. But... You know, it feels as though now it's Aronian that would be content with a draw because this pawn is so far advanced. Now the king needs some protection. You know, the queen and bishop combining could be rather nasty and that knight is loose. So therefore the knight drops back. Knights are good protecting the king. They complement each other very well. So the king you know, controls these squares and the knight controls squares around it and the king can often dance around that king to find some kind of security. Check. And the king prepares to go the other side. Aurelian takes on f4. Very cool move, actually. Of course precise calculation required. The queen does protect the pawn on d6. And after a7, now you can see the bishop is able to come here and threatens checkmate in one. And if that knight comes away, then this is really dangerous. That king could get checked all over the place. Um, and yeah, the queen comes here. 
can go behind, pawn, bishop f6 threatened. White has to be very careful. So in this position, bishop g5 just played, mating one threatened, queen a5 covers the knight. White still wants to get a queen. b4 blocks the queen, so queen takes knight, mate is threatened. Queen a2 defends. The pawn advances again. The queen comes back, protecting the knight. Queen e3. Nakamura gets a new queen, so it's two queens against one, but now it's a draw by perpetual check. Like this, king here, check. And that was the end of the game, a draw. If the king had tried to escape with king f1, in fact, it doesn't make any difference. Queen takes pawn check. The king is not going to escape. You know, soon we will be back into this routine here. Uh, and queen g1. But yeah, you can see that, that doesn't help at all. In fact, you, <laughs> that really doesn't help. <laughs> That's actually checkmate. So yeah, after queen e3 check, Nakamura prudently came to d1. And that was the end of the show. A draw. Really exciting first game of this final. As I said, I think both sides have something to prove. They both want to, want to qualify for the candidates. You know, Nakamura has had a layoff from classical chess over the past couple of years. Aronian, uh, he's now playing under the American flag and wants to regain his form. In fact, he's now up to number four in the world. He's gained quite a few points in this tournament and playing very quickly, very fluently. So it's going to be fascinating to see who wins out in this tournament. So they'll play game two today. I'm talking on uh, Wednesday, Wednesday the 16th. So do look out for that. And I will report back. Good stuff. Thanks for watching.